our Savior Jesus Christ and his gifts that he provides. Let us together rise as we begin our service with the rain of the church of of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy, and in, of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How is this child named? Jacob Aden. Jacob Aden. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved, believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Jacob Aden according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit 
that through this saving flood, all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. You may help him with some of the responses. <laughs> Jacob Aiden, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I yes. renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes. yes. I, I renounce, renounce them. them. And do you renounce all his ways? Yes, yes. I, I renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, yes, yes I, I believe. believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, yes I, I believe. believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, yes I, I believe. believe. Jacob Aden. Are you ready to be baptized? Yeah. yeah. He, he said yeah. yes. He said yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Ready? Come here, Jake. Gotcha. Jacob Aiden, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Almighty, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always as the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet with him in joy and enter into him with the marriage feast and the Lamb in this kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Jacob Aden the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that, as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. You don't you have can, to leave it burning all the church. Yeah, you can
Well, let's welcome Jacob Aden. Uh, now <laughs> Please stand as we continue with the Kyrie. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. <laughs> The Old Testament reading is from Acts chapter 17 and beginning with the 16th verse. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him and he saw the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Erg office saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you're presenting. For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know therefore what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling and hearing something new. So Paul standing in the midst of the Erg office said, men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an, an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. 
What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, and even as some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think about that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurances to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. And he has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3 and beginning with the 13th verse. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us God and being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. You also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest himself to me. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe. 
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's a pretty easy line, isn't it? Unfortunately, it's not easy to follow. And what it reveals is even worse. The truth is, we really don't love our God. Because by following His commandments, we signal our faith in Him. On our own accord, it would be truly, in fact, is impossible for us to keep God's commandments. Our hearts, on their own accord, care little about what God says, about what God would encourage us to do, how the Lord himself acted. The text for our meditation today reminds us clearly that we are truly in need of some help. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Well, you know, for all of us, God's children, we get that help. God sends us the assistance we need to love him and to keep his commandments. In fact, you were blessed today to be a part of that gift from God as we baptize another one of God's children in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we were given by the Spirit the ability to love others and to love our Lord and Savior. You know, it is true. Today in Bible class, we talked a little bit about how it's hard to love the unlovable. Those that are different than us. Those that look different than us. Those that may have a different theological or religious persuasion. I even told the story when I first met Barry, how it was true. How could I love the unlovable? <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if we don't, I mean, look, think about this. I mean, he probably said to him, I'm sorry, he told me, he said this to himself, so this, this guy, this is a pastor, you know? I mean, the reality for us comes down to simply this. Our desires and passions on our own accord would not have us loving God or loving our neighbor, following his commandments, or doing what he asks of us. Our own accord, our own persuasion would be to satisfy our own hearts, to ignore those who have needs, to think of ourselves rather than others, and to put God last rather than first. That's what our lives would be like without the power of holy baptism. And therein lies the beauty of being children of God. The gift that he gives in holy baptism, the freedom of the gift, the gift of faith, as the text says, the helper, the one that God says, to help you. I know all of you at some point have that battle that wrestles within. Luther calls it the drowning of the old Adam and the rising in baptism of the new Adam. A lot of people in the world today call it conscience, right? That little voice that speaks to you about, you know, I shouldn't go back for that fifth donut. You hear that, kid? <laughs> That's right. Or that little voice in the head that, that, that tells you, you really shouldn't be doing this. And then that battle ensues within the spirit. The evil, sinful nature of the human soul is being warred against by the baptized, forgiven nature of the Holy Spirit, the great helper, the one who helps us to overcome temptation, sin, and our own failings, the one who props us up and empowers us to be able to be the children of God that he intends for us, the children that he calls us and the children that he baptizes with water in the spirit. You know, in all the years I've done this, this is the first time that one of the little ones said out of her own mouth, yeah, I want to be baptized. If you could have heard it, it would have just been beautiful to your ears. I mean, it's amazing. Although, if you'd have seen his eyes when I tipped them. <laughs> as soon as Pastor Carlson started to put water on it, said the eyes got about that. But, I mean, it's beautiful that God has that picture of that joyful, as the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes comes the voice of God. Yes, I'm ready. The simple words motivated by the Spirit 
to do the will of God and to be a child. A child that calls the father, father. A child that calls the son, savior. And a child that calls the Holy Spirit, my friend. The great help. You know, as life moves on and things happen to us and life becomes heavy on our shoulders, and we stress about everything under the sun and, and whether everything is going to be perfect and right. I can tell you one thing. I spent many years getting mad at God because the plan that I had wasn't being unfolded. Because the way that I saw God's blessings was not congruent with God's blessings himself. Because I wasn't given the path that I wanted to walk. I, I, I've told this story specifically recently because of the seminary calls that I just was in. You know, I spent my first five years kind of missing my motherland, the great state of Michigan. And then when that first call came to go back to the homeland, to go back to the sleepy little town of Algonac, Michigan, I remember seeing those documents. I even remember talking to some of my members. And I know the bets were Hardy's gone. He's going back to Michigan. It's an hour from mom and dad, an hour from my brother, 15 minutes from hunting and fishing. He's out of here. Until I stood at the altar, and I looked up to the heavens, and I said, God, open my eyes to see your will in my life. And I turned around, and I realized I wouldn't see your faces. And the motherland didn't look so good anymore. The motherland was not where God wanted me to be, even though my path, my thought, my desire was to return home. God said, that's not mine. And then he showed me. And I tell you, sometimes it's not that dramatic in your life where that kind of major thing happens. I mean, some of you need a log to hit you in the head or various other things. But sometimes it's a simple little thing, like hearing a young child simply say, yeah, I want to be baptized. You hear the voice of God and understand that the helper is with you. And that even though your nature, your desire is selfish, your own desires would be for your own path. God says, I'm there. And I'm going to fix that for you. I'm going I'm to wash you clean. I'm going to make you righteous in my sight by the blood of my son. And now, my plan, my will, and what you should be doing is unfolded before you. You know, I don't know how, how Pastor Carlson feels about this, but I know when I stood at the feet, well, excuse me, the foot of the altar at the seminary in Fort Wayne. It's just a very simple little sentence, you know. Jameson Hardy, our Savior in Mount Lebanon, and it was blank. I didn't hear anything else. I thought I was going to Israel. I just heard Mount Lebanon. Where is Mount Lebanon? The only Mount Lebanon I had ever heard of was in Israel. And then I, after the shock of, you know, you walk across the altar, you shake all the hands. And I remember uh, Dean Wendy, the president of the summer, whispered in my ear. He said, those people need Jesus too. <laughs> I was in shock. I sat down in the chair, I'm in the pew, and they say, don't open your packet, right? In church, you know, you hear the shh. Like, and they had this little sticker on the top where it gives all the information. And it said, Pennsylvania, English district. This is a Michigan district boy that didn't even know the English district existed. And God's will in my life 17 years later is to serve in this presentation. Sometimes you don't know what God's going to do with you. But I encourage all of you to have the open heart to let the helper guide you. To let the helper keep your eyes focused on the will of God rather than the will of your own heart and desire. I mean, it's true. Satan wants to pull us away. And he wants us to believe that we are not the unlovable. He would make us believe that everyone else is unlovable and we are the most lovable out there. Have you guys taken a look at yourself in the mirror lately? I'm not talking about your looks. I'm talking about whether you're lovable or not. I mean, some of you are, by the way. I, I have to admit it. But some of you are. And God sent his son to die for all of us. No matter how unlovable you are, it is love from the Father that drives his son to be there on the cross and to say, it is finished. 
Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The problem is, many of you know what you're doing even before you do it. And yet Christ still, still remain on the cross. And those sins will be forgiven along with all the sins that you've committed. As Luther says in the small catechism, even those sins that are known about and those that are unknown, confess before God and know that you are forgiven by the power of Christ's blood. Let that be your joy this day. Let that be your motivation this day as the great helper comes to you through water and the Spirit and empowers you to be able to keep His commandments and to love the Lord, not on your own accord, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in His name we say, Amen. May God the Father who gives you the great gift of His Son, may God the Son give you whoa, the baptism of water on the floor. Hey, it needed to be washed in <laughs> May God the Son who gives you the great gift of his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We wish the Lord with our offering. And be careful when you come up here. <laughs>
and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. If we do not give up, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are in the household of faith. A reading from Colossians chapter 3. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. My dear brothers and sisters, I now ask you in the presence of God in this congregation, as I install you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as Stephen ministers. Amen. Amen. We pray. God of all grace and mercy, bless those who serve as Stephen ministers at Peace Lutheran Church, Ron, Bob, Jim, Sharon, and Barbara, that they may be faithful in serving your people. Grant that through their service, your church may be built up in faith to honor your most holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we continue in prayer, O Lord God, visit these new Stephen ministers with your love and favor. Enlighten their minds with the light of your holy gospel. Place in their hearts a love for the truth and increase in them true faith. Nourish them with your goodness and of your great mercy. Keep them in your love that they may be faithful in their service through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for your service, Barbara. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Ron. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you. Let me go back to your seats. At this time, we ask for any prayers to be brought before the Lord this day. Paul. Tanya. Yes, we will keep the um, uh, family of George, Lawson, Mary, and also Marlon in our prayers as God has called his people home. Pardon me? That's their families. With that, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. Lord God, we give thanks that you have put before us this day the truth, that you have sent your spirit through holy baptism and the washing of the water with the word, and you've made us able and right to be able to love you and keep your commandments. Help us, O Lord, by your great promise to be with us, to lead us, and to guide us all the days of our life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, as we come before you this day, we ask you to be with all those who come and go in your name, those who travel. We ask you to keep them safely where they are going. Return them safely to their place of rest, that all that they may do and say may be glorifying unto you this day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be with all those who teach and learn, as another school year is coming to a close this day, O Lord. We ask you to bless both student and teacher. As they come to an end of a school year, keep them focused, not looking too far into the break of summer, but finishing all the responsibilities at hand and receiving all the knowledge needed. We ask this earnestly, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with the families of Marlon, Mary, and George, O Lord. As you have called these your children home, send your Holy Spirit to strengthen them, 
Give them peace and joy at knowing their loved ones now rest in your arms, in the heavenly host, singing praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us to be comforts to those who yet remain, and be a light for us so we may be lights for those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us into the new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body and drinking his blood, uh, poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of eternal life. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Have mercy
welcome to the table of Christ. Body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to part forgiven by the Savior. Go in his peace. Amen. this, the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. Depart forgiven by the Lord. Go in his peace. Welcome to the table of Christ.
this in the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you. Depart forgiven. Go in his peace. Amen. body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. Depart forgiven. Go in his peace. Amen.
Let us rise for the post communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all the sick our Lord rejoice and proudly. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us in this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. in that final announcement for um, Marlin's service. It's going to be at Laughlin Memorial Chapel, which is on Washington Road in Mount Lebanon. It's Tuesday. Uh, they'll start receiving people at 10 o'clock. The service will be at 11. So if, if you can uh, go and support Martha, the service will be at Laughlin Memorial Chapel, Mount Lebanon, 11 o'clock. Tuesday. Not Israel. Good morning. Um, we have a 
Thrivent service team scheduled for today, but we're going to have to postpone it till next Sunday so that way everybody can work out in the front yard and stuff. So we'll cancel that till next week. Thanks. I got a couple. Bear with me. Um, so we currently have 607 pairs of shoes for the shoe drive. Our goal is to have 200 bags of shoes. They put 25 pairs of shoes per bag. So that's roughly 5,000 pairs of shoes. So that's where we're at. If we get less than that, we lose a little bit of money because I'm assuming shipping costs and stuff like that. So just an FYI, that's where we're at. Um, please don't stop bringing in your shoes. We appreciate it. You guys have been wonderful. I made an error. Our actual end date for the shoe drive is now July 14th because I can't count to 90. Um, finally, um, the community notices us. I got this little letter, which I laminated for you guys, in a bag of shoes. And I'm going to read it to you very quickly. It says, I saw in the almanac and also at the library about the shoe drive you are having. I'm sure you remember being at my house. I won the drawing several years back at your community day booth. I won a day of yard work and you, the Fusion Youth Group, along with your leaders, the Jesuits, put stones around our house. Your group did such a nice job. I am still enjoying it and thanks again. So when I saw you were having a shoe drive, I wanted to help out. So right now, here are four pairs of shoes. If I find any more, I'll drop them off before the end of May. It's such a great project, getting shoes to people who need them desperately. I hope you receive a lot of shoes and have a real successful project. Thank you for caring about the less fortunate and helping out all those feet. Brenda Moore. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, obviously, people notice us when we do go out and do things. So woo, go us and go youth group. Yeah, yeah, but look, I hope you heard what she just said. When we had the booth at Community Day, we had this drawing, and I think you were a youth at the time, weren't you? Kara, you're supposed to be one of my bright, shining stars. <laughs> but we, we, the youth group went over to this woman's house, house and, and did a bunch of yard work and stuff. And this is the kind of stuff that people notice. And they remember. And obviously, she hasn't forgotten what those now not kids anymore did. So that's great. Wonderful. I want to remind you that uh, Faith Night is coming up Thursday, August 17th. The uh, Pittsburgh Pirates will be playing the Cardinals, so it should be a good game, win or lose. Um, Long-time rivalry there, of course. Uh, manager Clint Hurdle will be sharing his faith, as well as a number of the other players, including very possibly some from the Cardinals as well. Um, we're going to have a total of the group that I've put together with the Pirates is a total of 16 tickets. Um, and the price is $25 each, which I'm just going to go ahead and pay those, and then you can pay me back if you want to be uh, part of the group. Again, the, sixth, uh, pardon me, the 17th of August, it's a Thursday night, and uh, I hope we can go and enjoy a, a good night of baseball and some wonderful sharing of our faith. Thanks, Bob. The slave driver. I mean, Len Pfeiffer, everybody. <laughs> Len Pfeiffer. Workday. Um, <clears throat> th there's a couple of different things I wanted to let you know. Those of you who are going to be sticking around for the workday, if you need to change or make any adjustments and so forth, we're going to be eating first. That's the first thing we're going to be doing. So we'll give you enough time to change and whatever and then just head downstairs. When we're all down there eating, that's when I'll give you the rest of the assignments and how things are going and where the supplies are and what's going on. Okay? Those of you who are sticking around, uh, the weather has held off. I heard the weather was supposed to be terrible, so we were going to plan a lot of inside stuff. So I kind of put together a bunch of things to do outside also. So uh, whenever you're ready, just come on downstairs. Food is all ready, and we're ready to go. Appreciate it. Thank you. If uh, you didn't hear or don't know, about two weeks ago at both of our seminaries, 99 men were placed into the Holy Office of the Ministry at various churches throughout the United States and Canada, and the English district received 11 of the 99 men in a potential 35 districts. So we got pretty good percentages on this one. But 62 churches were without pastors to serve them. The church is significantly in need of workers in the harvest field. Everywhere I go, every congregation I speak to, I remind God's people of this call. You know, as I've uh, had the pleasure of serving in this office, I've seen 
the drastic difference with congregations who don't have pastors. And so pray that the Lord would touch those hearts to serve him in the church. And once again, he would return the harvest full, as he does. And sometimes we, God's people, need to call on him for that. And so I urge you all to do that. With that, any other announcements? Let us rise and close our service with song. Thank you.